Today I am walking in some open Ponderosa Pine Douglas fir forest in search of one of our earliest spring flowers, a beautiful flower appropriately called Spring Beauty. It's a little white flower and very simple flower. And at first I thought it had a very simple story, but the more I dug in, I found that these little flowers have some fascinating strategies. They're renowned as one of our prettiest early blooming flowers, which means that they're coming up when there's still a lot of snow on the ground. So how do they come up when there's so much snow still covering the ground? They have a lot of stored carbohydrates in their bulb and they collect this energy the year before, store it in their bulb, and then use this stored energy to push up underneath the snow when they have no access to sunlight. So they actually form all of their flower parts and start pushing them up out of the ground into the snow while they're still buried several feet deep. And then as soon as the snow starts melting around them, they put out their first leaves, they start photosynthesizing, and then they're ready to go very quickly early in the season. So an important part of this is that all of the stored energy is food for other things also. Um, this was an important food for early native peoples who would collect the bulbs and they tasted like potatoes. Um, and the leaves and flower parts are rich in vitamin C and vitamin A. And in research they did in Yellowstone National Park, it turns out that this flower is the number one food source for grizzly bears. Here we have the basic structure of this flower. Two stem leaves, the basal leaves fall off early in the season and then it's replaced by two stem leaves that are long and lancelet and then a little cluster of beautiful flowers in the center. Generally white, sometimes pinkish with pinkish purple uh, veins on the petals and then this gorgeous yellow center um, and then pink tipped, I uh, believe they're anthers in here. The strategy of Markings on petals like this are generally to uh, help pollinators find the flower. So I assume that's the case with this flower too. These beautiful purple pink lines going into the center of the flower say to the pollinator, These, this is the direction to the center. And then the center of the flower has this beautiful yellow bullseye painted around it. This is where you wanna go for your nectar and pollen reward come right here. It makes for a very efficient visit and then the pollinator will visit more flowers. Now there's one other strategy that these flowers do that I won't be able to show you now because it's early in the season, they're still flowering, but when they produce seeds, they have an amazing way of dispersing their seeds. Um, they forcibly eject their seeds out from their capsules and then each seed, probably a little black seed, has what's called an ileosome attached to it. E-L-I-A-S-O-M-E, -E. Eliasome, is a little fat packet, and it's a reward for ants that collect the seeds. So ants come along, they find the seeds, they want that little fat packet, which is rich in fats and proteins that their larvae need. So the ants collect the seeds, take them back to their nest, pull off the little fat packet, feed it to their larvae, and then take the seeds and put them in their little compost heap in their nest in the ground. And in that nest is all kinds of organic material and debris. And the seeds are basically planted underground by the ants in exchange for offering them a reward for their larvae. Seeds that are not collected by ants are all harvested by mice that come along and eat the seeds, ruining them. So this plant wants its seeds to be collected by ants and taken to a safe place and buried underground. When I first started looking at these flowers, I thought they were really simple and that they would have a simple story. I was pretty amazed when I started researching them and learned all the stuff about how they come up under the snow, which I didn't know, and how they spread their seeds. Just some of the really interesting stories that even simple plants have in the lives around us. And I hope you appreciated learning a little bit more about this common flower.